Degeneration Alzheimer's is staying about level over the last 10 years, or do you think it's going up? Oh, yeah. It's going up by a lot yeah, in the last 10 years. And it's not leveling off, it's going like this. It's going up faster. So that's a, that's a major thing. We're going to hear a lot about that because if you think about how much money it takes to take care of someone with that neurodegeneration and the quality of life that they're living, that's a big thing that we don't want to deal with. And so some of the foods that we're going to talk about actually prevent or reverse neurodegeneration. In fact, blueberry is one of the things on our list. They've done studies on blueberries, and one of the ingredients in blueberries actually reverses that neurodegeneration. So hugely important. Anti-inflammatory. So when you look at a lot of the diseases, even just aging itself, they, should, they say that now it shouldn't even be called aging. They should be, they should be called inflammaging because inflammation causes aging. The more inflammation you have, the faster your body ages. So it's not just how old you are, it's how much inflammation you have, how much wear and tear you're getting. Inflammation causes pain, causes damage to our heart, to our arteries, causes damage to our brain. So inflammation is a huge, huge problem. And a lot of these things that we're going to talk about are going to prevent inflammation. So very important. Um, these ones should pretty much make sense. Antiviral means it eliminates viruses from the body. So when we get sick, a lot of times viruses are what's causing the problem. An antiviral will eliminate a virus. It basically releases a chemical that viruses don't like, so they leave the area. Uh, antibacterial, the same thing. They'll release a chemical that the little bugs don't like. Kind of like if, if you spray uh, rayon on an ant hill, the ants will vacate. Um, it's kind of the same thing that these foods will release a chemical that gets rid of that bacteria or fungus. Antioxidant goes right along with this detoxification thing. So when we're breathing in pollution or taking in pollution, that's what they call an oxidant or a free radical. So if you hear the word free radical or oxidation, what's happening is you get these chemicals, as they break down in the body, these free radicals are little, little molecules that go and damage our cells or damage our arteries, damage different parts of the body cause damage to the DNA that cause cancer, cause damage to the arteries that cause atherosclerosis or blocking of the arteries. So antioxidants go in and repair, or attach the free radicals and prevent them from damaging the arteries, from damaging the joints, from damaging the DNA, and from damage from causing cancer. And the last one is anti-carcinogenic. And so carcinogenic means something that's causing cancer. So when we look at like peanuts, one of the molds that grows on peanuts is called aflatoxin. Anybody ever heard of aflatoxin? One of the most cancer-causing substances they've ever tested in, in the laboratory. So if you eat peanut butter, they take like some of the worst peanuts that they could grow and they grind those up because the good-looking peanuts, they're going to they're gonna sell those as just regular peanuts. The rest of the batch, they're kind of have a little bit of mold on them or a little bit of horn on That's what they grind up and they make peanut butter out of. So the very carcinogenic or cancer causing is the aflatoxin. When they want to test and find out is something going to prevent cancer, they give the animal aflatoxin <coughs> because they know that that causes cancer and then they test the next ingredient to see if it prevents them from getting cancer. So the aflatoxin or the, the mold that grows on peanuts is one of the most toxic things that, that we could do. So peanut butter didn't make the list for superfood. <laughs> <laughs> First one that, the first one that did make the list is broccoli. And so we had this on the board. Everybody probably saw broccoli. Um, broccoli, you think broccoli actually has the same amount or almost the same amount of calcium as milk. And so when we look at like a cow, cows, we know cows have milk and they have calcium in their milk. But how much milk do cows drink? <laughs> Not much. So where do they, they, they get all this calcium from? Grass. The grass. So they're eating vegetables and they're absorbing the calcium from the vegetables or from the grass, and that's where they're getting all the calcium from. Uh, does it make sense that if we looked at the study of all the countries in the world that drink the most milk, we would think that they would have the least amount of osteoporosis, right? Because they had the most calcium. Does that, does anybody, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It'd be strange to believe that when we actually look at the research, the people that drink the most milk have the most arthritis and the most osteoporosis. That's what the studies say. So sometimes the best source for, for calcium may not be milk. Broccoli and vegetables is gonna you're gonna absorb more of the calcium from it. And it comes down to a lot with this balancing the pH. Because when we have an acidic 
level in our body, we have to pull calcium out of the bones and out of the blood to put into the bloodstream to balance it out. Whereas broccoli will balance that pH out for us, so we don't have to worry about pulling extra calcium out of the body. Loaded with vitamin C, that's an antioxidant that prevents damage. Indoles, this is a chemical that's in broccoli, protects against certain cancers, specifically breast, prostate, and lung cancer. So if we look at what are the main cancers that are killing people in the United States right now, we know that these are very high on the list. And then <coughs> glucoferrin, glucophanin, it's a powerful detoxifier. So we look at what does broccoli have in it that's going to help detoxify the body. Uh, it's a huge, it's got some, definitely some chemicals that are in there. Other things that we might not consider in the same category as broccoli is going to be like your spinach, your kale, cauliflower. So even though it's white, it's actually considered the same, in the same category as broccoli. Does it make a difference um, whether you eat them raw or cooked, or is one better? It does better? make a difference, okay. yes. Um, raw is mm -hmm. going to be better as you cook the broccoli, especially if you cook it in water. Mm -hmm. Anybody cook water, broccoli in water, you see the mm -hmm. water's green when you dump out the water. There's a lot of good ingredients that are in there that are going down the drain. Mm -hmm. So steaming it is better than boiling it. Eating it raw is better than, than, than cooking it. Um, when you look at how old the broccoli is, the, the younger the broccoli, the more of this glucoferrin glucofer, in, that's in there. So the broccoli that's about three days old, they say has the, the highest concentration of that detoxifying agent. It's hard to know how old it is. So. Yeah, it's hard to know, unless you're growing it in your own garden mm -hmm. or you're getting it from your farmer. The other thing that, that we look at, um, we want to buy broccoli that is organic because if you notice all these little dimples on the broccoli, if we're spraying it with chemicals, it's hard to wash that and get all those little chemicals out of there. So this is one of the foods that's going to be more important that you're going to buy it organically. If you're taking the skin off it like a banana, not as important that that's organic. But broccoli, very difficult to wash that and get all the chemical out of there. So second food, blueberries. So we talked about blueberries um, just a little bit ago. Um, Recent study said uh, they looked at people with some neurodegeneration and they started having them eat blueberries. And they had a lot of blueberries. They did a couple of blueberries a day, the wild blueberries, for I think it was six or eight months. And they looked at, they did a functional MRI of their brain previous to it, functional MRI later, and they found that the brain aging was reversed by up to 10 to 12 years by eating blueberries one cup a day for six to eight months. So pretty massive amount of change because usually they, we would believe that brain aging only goes one direction. It only gets worse or slower or harder to remember things. But when they added blueberries, they noticed that it actually reversed. People, their brains were getting more functional. Uh, blueberries are going to reduce cholesterol because they are a soluble fiber. So they attach that cholesterol, pull it out of the body. They improve heart health because of this. They improve brain function, loaded full of antioxidants. Berries, specifically blueberries, are, have one of the highest concentrations of antioxidants that you can eat. Same with a lot of other berries. Um, blueberries are just a little bit better. Pre prevent bladder infections. So one of the ingredients that's in blueberries uh, attaches to the lining of the, of the bladder, prevents bacteria from attaching to that. So we always hear like cranberries, <coughs> if you have a bladder infection, drink cranberry juice, it changes the pH balance of the bladder. Um, blueberries have the, some of the same ingredients in there to help get rid of the, the bladder infections. And to me, I've had cranberry juice and I've had blueberries. I'd rather eat blueberries. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if anybody else has that experience. Um, Anti-inflammatory, so they help with pain and arthritis. So they're going to reduce inflammation in the body. So blueberries are really good and they're tasty. The wild blueberries, they're, they're, those are the ones that you want. Those are the small little ones. They're packed full of more nutrients. Um, when you start growing blueberries commercially and, and farming them and spraying them with chemicals, they don't quite do as well, so they're not loaded with quite as many of the good ingredients. The, the wild ones, those are the ones that have more, way more of the good things, and they're going to be smaller, so you have to eat more of them. But um, Third food, fermented foods. So anybody know any examples of fermented foods? Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is one. Yogurt is a fermented food. They have fermented soy. You can make your own fermented vegetables. 
um, kefir, wine, some of the wine is fermented wine, 